Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for you all being here. The decision itself is uh, great for the series and for Test cricket. The team is extremely satisfied with the ruling that has been made. We believe that KG never deliberately charged Stephen Smith with his shoulder. We do understand, though, that KG is quite a fiery character on the field, but there are rules and regulations that govern the conduct on the field. Like every other player, this applies to KG as well, and he is well aware of it. He is the first to admit that he must take better responsibility and better handle his positive and aggressive celebration, and not to get careless, nor to be disrespectful. At the same time, we will always support our players in situations like these, where we believe that the code of conduct has been unfairly enforced upon us. We would also like to thank the entire South African public and fans worldwide for their messages of support during this time. I'm happy to take questions around this. Doc, can you tell us, I mean, how much can you tell us about the arguments that were made which um, eventually resulted in the sanction being lessened? I think it will be unfair to talk precisely around the merits of the case and the exact arguments, but it's safe to say that there were, there were definitely key learnings uh, for everybody. I think it will allow, it will stimulate healthy debate, and it might even allow for people to sit around the table because the ICC are the custodians uh, of the game after all. And we may have to look at things around processes, independent judicial commissions, uh, words in the, in, in the code of conduct manual. So those are the kind of debates that would take place. And we as South Africa will be, ha will be happy to contribute to that. Just on that, Doc, did you raise issues in the hearing about the consistency of the ICC process in general? Have you got concerns? From a South African pr perspective, we have raised issues in the past around not the code of conduct per se, but I think the inconsistent application of the code of conduct itself. Uh, in this case, it wasn't particularly raised, as I said, but it has been raised prior to this case. Was that issue in Bangladesh the other day used as a comparison? No, not at all. Not at all. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, Paul. I didn't see you there. Uh, can you just explain to us uh, the role of um, Advocate Dalim Pofu and his team? <coughs> yeah, I mean, it would be a mess of me not to thank Cricket South Africa's legal team for the sterling work done at such short notice. Uh, the, the two teams that were involved were renowned sports lawyers, Beck and Associates, and obviously Cricket South Africa commissioned Advocate Dalim Pofu together with some of his junior counsel to get involved. And this was done, as you, as you can well understand, may well understand, at very short notice. And uh, we're very pleased with their efforts, and we're very grateful and thankful to them. Yes, so has there been like, some sort of understanding now reached about how behavior will take place over the next two tests, not just for KG, but for everybody and between both teams? Not, not formally. I think the, prior to any series, the match refs would normally chat to the captains uh, and to the, the team managers, and that remains in place. And you haven't spoken to the new match refs? Uh, not as yet. Cricket? <laughs> <laughs> Anything? Anybody here for cricket? Yeah, I guess just your response to the same thing. It um, must be obviously a massive boost to, to the team this year. Yeah, for sure it is. Um, you know, the number one boy in the world um, being allowed to play cricket um, is exciting for everybody concerned. Does it add an extra spice to, to the test match now? I mean, this news, I mean, certainly for KG himself, does it make him even more pumped up than he may have been for a, for a normal test match? No, we... Um, I don't think we need to pump him up anymore, eh? <laughs> uh, obviously, you know, we're very happy that he's allowed to play, um, and we all believe that it's the right decision at the end of the day. Um, and, you know, we, he's been made very much aware of his, his sort of on-field celebration. I don't want to say behavior because he's not a bad behaved kid. You know, he's just very excited and exuberant sometimes. Um, when you're playing against the best team in the world, sometimes that come out of you. Um, you know, they, they, in all the stuff that he did, there was nothing, no ag aggressive intent other than celebrating a wicket. Um, but we've made him aware of, you know, the batsman's space and his 
where his space needs to be, so he must get away from the batsman and, and continue to celebrate and continue certainly to bowl the way he's been bowling over the last two weeks, which has been outstanding. Otis, um, you've got a squad of 17, presumably you, you, this simplifies your selection to some extent. Are you going to release some players and also which positions might be up for debate ahead of this game? Um, well, certainly it will. Him being available simplifies a lot of things for us. He's the best bowler in the world for sure. Uh, and then we will definitely be releasing guys, um, some probably as early as tomorrow, um, to go. Obviously, there's a very important um, round of some foil games coming up this weekend as well. So we'll certainly be releasing some guys. Uh, we're still sort of putting together the sort of final 11 at the stage. So we don't know yet. Um, where, where else we can, we're going to try and make a change. So, but all of, all of that will become a lot clearer this afternoon, after practice. Uh, Otis, um, the tone of the series so far has been very acrimonious with people trying to get other people into trouble. And of course, KG is still on seven points. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, kind of, it's, not, it's not far away. Are you, are you worried that people will try and drag him into confrontations on the field? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, they might do, but uh, you know, he's a smart kid, and he's, I'm sure, learned his lesson from, from what happened um, last week, and I don't expect that he will make the same mistake again. Oh, just, uh, yesterday, when he came down to practice, he just wanted to have a ball, and he just wanted to get stuck in there. Uh, do you think sitting in the courtroom, so to say, for the last week, and all these things, where's his mental state at? Oh, yeah. Look, he, he's a very strong character, you know, and he came after six hours in a, in a courtroom as you call it yesterday he came and all he wanted to do was practice you know that's what that's what the guy loves doing um, you know and like I said it's we're very pleased that he's been allowed to do that for the, for the rest of the series and he's he's also like I said been made very much aware of his responsibility going forward not just to himself but to the team as well he's an important miss for the team if he's not if he's not available then he's an important too too much of an important player for us to have something like this go on again so we've made him aware of that but like you saw yesterday, he came out and I had to almost force him to warm up because all he wanted to do was get stuck in with his teammates. Uh, Coach, how's Temba and is he in line for, for selection on Thursday? Um, he's fine uh, and all 17 guys are here um, are in line for selection. Uh, do you have any sympathy for Mono's position? He's on the verge of that uh, milestone and uh, he's only got two possible test players to play. Is that something you talk to him about or consider? Um, he's also in line for selection um, for this week. So um, I'm sure whatever, whichever way we go with the team, uh, like you said, he's got two more opportunities. And um, sympathy, I'm not sure, because it, it's international sport and, we have to, and we're trying to win a series and we'll try and pick the best team possible to do that. Uh, and he's still very much a part of our, our plans for the next two games. Oh, it's the last test here was uh, done in nine sessions um, that had a lot to do with the nature of the wickets. Yeah. Um, are you expecting this one to go deeper? Um, well, if everybody bowls well and, and stuff like that, it could do. Um, but the series, the way the series has been played, there's been a lot of really good cricket. The wicket here, um, the groundsman says, will be pretty much the same as it was um, for the last one. Uh, so we expect the two teams to go hard at each other on the field and maybe leave some of the off-field stuff, you know, off the field. Um, is the, I know that everyone in the camp sort of believes it's the right decision, but it must still have come as a bit of a surprise. I mean, what, what's, what's it done to the mood in the camp? Like, is it, is it going to give you some momentum going into to Thursday? Um, I think, you know, I don't really like the word momentum, but I think we got some momentum from the fact that we won the last test match. Um, KG was going to be a big miss, um, like I said, and the reason why Cricket South Africa fought the case because we didn't, we didn't think that it, it merited um, a suspension. Um, so we're obviously happy, delighted in fact that we've won we won that case and. Him being available for us lifts everybody. You know, again, he's he's been outstanding in this series so far, and he's the number one bowler in the world. You know, and um, I think I saw somewhere as well the Aussies said they wanted to play against the best teams uh, and the best players. So I'm sure they also will be delighted that he's playing if if that's what they're saying. You know, so I'm sure that.
for everybody concerned in cricket, we all feel like perhaps it is, it is the right call after all. Yeah, I think the last Oh, just apart from the KG issue, what other things are you working on before this test? Are there things from the previous match that you need to focus on? Um, you know, we, we looked after every game. We sit down and we look at where we can improve. You know, after the first game, um, Stark bothered us. Obviously, he got a lot of wickets and won the man of the match. We went away and worked really hard on how we can um, combat Stark um, in the second in, in the second test. Obviously, he still bowled very well, but we played him a lot better. Um, you know, and, and every day we're looking to improve ourselves as players um, and as a team. You know, so. It's not not necessarily one particular thing that we're doing. We're trying to improve overall all the time. You know, the spinner is still a threat, even though he hasn't got a lot of wickets yet. He's still a very good bowler. So we're making sure that we understand how we're going to score against him, but keep him out as well. Um, and just keep, you know, there's a lot of obviously when we win, when we won the game last week, there's a lot of positive energy around the team, and keep making sure that that positive energy is channeled in the right in the right direction. Okay. I was just uh, obviously being, not being South African, but seeing how the South African nation has come around and supported KG, has that made an impact on you, on the, the team that you coaching? Um, look, I think the way that the, the whole South African public welcomed me in the first place was, was huge. That, that made an impact more so than, than the KG thing. The KG thing is people just want to see the best players playing the game, you know, and I guess that the public also realized that um, what happened perhaps didn't merit um, the best player in the, the best certainly the best ball in the world being suspended so from that point of view it's good to see that, that everybody sort of got it wrong and supported him but um, at the end of the day it just comes back to cricket you know and, and people want to see the best players playing cricket.